So one of the advantages of server managers is we can use it to manage multiple servers at the same time. So what happens when we install Windows Server with a desktop experience, it installs server manager and by default server manager just manages a local server. Now in this particular instance, I have a server, I've got a second server in my network as well. In fact, let's go to tools and Active Directory Users and Computers. And I currently have, so I am currently on my it146.local domain, I actually have a subdomain here called child.it146.local. In fact, if I go to, let's do it this way, let's go to Tools and Active Directory Domains and Trusts. And I can find my it146.local and I can right click and manage it. And that will open it up in server manager, in Active Directory users and computers. And now I can see my domain controller is server three. Now, if I'm in, let me go back just to straight users and computers. I can right click and I can change my domain that I'm managing here. Now this works because it's a child domain and so I've got a trust relationship in there. So I can say change domain and I can browse to find my domains, expand IT146 and there's child.it146 and now I can manage that domain. Okay. By the way, just as a side note, um, most of our management tools in Windows will manage multiple servers. So let me go to, oh, let's do our DNS. I'm not actually going to connect one. I just want to show you how to do it. So I'm managing server two right now. If I right click on DNS, I can connect to another DNS server. I can specify the following computer, and as long as I can get to that computer and I have the rights to manage it, I can manage that computer remotely. Okay, cool. Which means that I can install my admin tools and I can manage multiple servers from a single location. Fact, we're going to get back to that adding a server to server manager. I do want to show you one other thing here real quick first, and that is this. If I go to manage, add roles and features, and I select my current, I'm going to skip roles. I'm going to go straight to features. I want to find my remote server admin tools, and I can expand this right here. So feature admin tools and role-based admin tools. So I can expand my role-based admin tools and I can say, hey, I don't want to install DHCP on this server, but I do want to install my DHCP server tools on this server. And then what that lets me do is I open up my DHCP server tools. It says, there's not a DHCP server here. You say, I know, right click on DHCP server, connect to server, pointed at the server that actually has DHCP and it lets you manage it from here. So the idea is we want to be able to manage multiple servers from one single location without having to run around from server to server or RDP from server to server. Now I will tell you that remote server admin tools is it's built into Windows Server. It's also available as a download from Microsoft for Windows clients, which means on your client workstation where you work most of the time, you can install the remote server admin tools and can admin your server services remotely, which is a very, very useful thing to be able to do. All right, I'm going to cancel this. Let's talk about what we're supposed to talk about here, and that is adding servers to server manager. So I can use server manager to manage multiple servers. And you'll notice right now, server groups one, servers total one. So I'm only managing my local server. But now I know I've got that other, so this is server two, I've got server three running around out there as well. So let me see if I can manage that from here as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to manage and add servers. And I'm gonna specify I want server three. Now, it's actually not going to be able to find Server 3 because I'm looking in IT146. So you got to think about your location here. Server 3 is actually in a subdomain, child.it146. So I'm going to click my little arrow here, and I can find child, which is going to be a domain. I can also look inside specific OUs if I have a bunch of them and I want to filter it down. So I'm going to go to child, and I'm still looking IT146 child, and now I can find now, and there's my Server 3. So I'm going to select on server three and I'm going to click this and that's going to select child.it146.local, one server from there, namely server three. I'm going to click OK. 
And so now what it does is it tries to go access server uh, three. And now you're going to see I have two servers total. Two of them are running ADDS. Two of them are running DNS. Two of them are running file servers. Only one of them is running print services. And then I've got my local server. And then my all servers, there are two of them. One of them has a failed service. And that's not my local server, so that's got to be server three. So now I can pull up information on all of my servers and then all of these things over here that will give me feedback, information, or let me do some configurations, I can see it across multiple servers. So if I click on DNS, for example, server 2 and server 3 are running it. Here's their IP addresses. Here's where they're online. Here's the activation. All other information or lots of other information about it. Same thing with... Uh, ADDS. If I want to view all of my servers, it will show me all of my servers here. So this gives me a great way to manage multiple servers at one time. Back to this idea of adding rules and features. So if I'm managing multiple servers, I can go to manage, add roles and features, and say I want to pick a different computer. And now it's going to list all of the computers that I am managing, and I can say, hey, I want to add this role to server three. And then I can go ahead and install my role or feature on a remote server. So this becomes very useful because it gives me a single admin point to admin everything, which is awesome. Between this and then being able to do remote server uh, admin through my tools, and being able to point them as a at a different server. I can use my GUI tools to manage servers from a single point, regardless of where they're physically located at, as long as I have network connectivity and permissions to it. So one other thing to be aware of, and that is you may end up in a situation where you have a whole bunch of servers and you want to group them together. So for that, we would go to manage and then create a server group. And let me create a server group, and I'm going to call this child domain. And for my child domain, I'm going to add this server to my child domain group. And then click OK. And so now I have another group here called child domain. And it shows me that I have an error in my child domain, it's still in my all services. It's just a service that hasn't come up yet. If I refresh, it might go away. Hmm, not yet. So. I can put things in groups, and I can group it however I want to, right? I can group it by Active Directory organizational structure. I can group it by physical location. I can group. I already have groups based on roles, and roles and services. So the idea is that it gives me a different way to quickly overview and look at all of my servers, and then determine, hey, I've got a service down here. It's a Microsoft Edge update service that stopped. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that one too much since I don't have access to the internet, so I can't update it anyway. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how we can use this multi-server function of server manager to aid in our system administration.